This video summarizes the book Outwitting the Devil 1938 by the renowned Napoleon Hill. Welcome to 2024, where we the people are living lives that we did not plan. Lives that are full of fear and suffering, lives that are stuck or on a loop. The life that the devil wants for us. It is time that we break free from this possession and become actual creators of our lives, just as God intended us to be. So join us in this video presentation as we uncover the devil's true nature and learn how to free ourselves from his grip and live the life that would echo throughout centuries with the timeless, intricate wisdom and teachings of Napoleon Hill. It is my business to represent the negative side of everything, including the thoughts of you earthbound people. How else could I control people? My opposition controls positive thought. I control negative thought. The Devil The entity called the Devil the author interviews is not a tangible presence, but rather a malevolent force, an intangible energy wielding influence over the collective consciousness by sowing seeds of pessimistic or negative thoughts in the minds of the majority of humanity. In the book, the author Napoleon Hill identifies six forms of fear that hold us back in life. 1. Fear of poverty. 2. Fear of criticism. 3. Fear of bad health. 4. Fear of losing love. 5. Fear of old age. 6. Fear of death. The two strongest forms of fear are poverty and death. Those who do not allow for fear to have a dominant place in their thoughts cannot be controlled by this negative energy. Instead, those who learn to think for themselves are the ones who are truly free. Those who think on their own and inspire others to do the same are the enemies of the devil. Stop letting others control your thoughts. Start thinking for yourself. Let go of your fears about the unknown and start focusing on what's actually happening. Let go of what you cannot control. Start focusing on what you can control. Ask yourself, what is in my environment that I can control? And how can I focus on that? Can you control the weather? No. Can you control what you do with most of your time? Yes. Can you control other people's opinions? No. Can you control which people you surround yourself with? Yes. Can you control your thoughts? Yes. Can you control your decisions? Yes. Can you control whether your dominating thoughts are positive or negative? Yes. Identify the seeds of fear for what they are and put them to rest. I cause people to allow me to do their thinking for them because they are too lazy and too indifferent to think for themselves. The Devil The Devil speaks a great deal about the difference between drifters and non-drifters. It is his goal to cause all humans to become drifters. Laziness combined with indifference leads to procrastination, ultimately resulting in a state of drifting without clear direction or purpose. Drifters are those who do not think for themselves, but instead let life just happen to them. Non-drifters are self-thinkers who do the exact opposite. Non-drifters don't just let things happen, they make things happen. Now, can you think of the one major determining factor between whether a person becomes a drifter or non-drifter? The answer is habits. Your habits are the single greatest influence of whether you become a drifter or a non-drifter. Good habits will pull you up and help you become a non-drifter or consciously create a purposeful, meaningful life. Bad habits will push you down and make you drift into a purposeless, meaningless life. Unhealthy habits lead to poor decisions. They are influenced by fear and your environment. In the book, Hill describes how traditional schooling, some religious leaders, and even parents can unknowingly play a part in creating unhealthy habits in young children by stifling their curiosity and ability to think for themselves. When a child's ability to think independently is taken from them, it creates a void, a void that's filled by the devil or negative thought. And when the devil takes ownership of a person's mind, you can be sure he'll do everything in his power to make them drift. 
There are a number of ways in which we can drift due to poor habits and decisions. Poor health choices, bickering in marriage, an occupation chosen based on fear of poverty, lack of savings, unpleasant relationships, dominating negative thoughts. The bottom line is that a drifter finds himself with no purpose in life by which to be guided. A non-drifter has a well-organized plan complete with minor goals that lead to the major goal he is working towards. Learn to think for yourself. Take control of your thoughts and encourage those around you, especially children, to explore their creativity and to think independently. Develop healthy habits in your diet, finances, relationships, and in your thought process. If you are a drifter, it's okay. You can wake up and start being a non-drifter. Begin by offering a part of yourself as the initial step. You have to give before you can get. The non-drifter takes from life whatever he wants, but he takes it on his own terms. The drifter takes whatever he can get, but he takes what he gets on my terms. The Devil Throughout the interview, the devil lays out some of his more effective tricks for derailing people in life. Propaganda Any device, plan, or method by which people can be influenced without knowing that they are being influenced or the source of the influence. Propaganda infiltrates schools, pulpits, movies, advertising, and even in business to discourage competition. Bribes. The things people most want. Love, sex, money, something for nothing, vanity, egotism, power, drugs, self-expression, imitation, eternal life, heroism, and hunger are all methods by which negative thought enters the mind and causes one to drift. To protect yourself from the personal obstacles that negative thought, a.k.a. the devil, throws at you, you must adopt the seven heavenly virtues which are chastity, temperance, charity, diligence, kindness, patience, and humility. The law of hypnotic rhythm is the last stage of habit. Any thought or physical movement which is repeated over and over through the principle of habit finally reaches the proportion of rhythm. Once habit arrives at this stage, it becomes very difficult to be broken. Those who are able to control their own mind to form healthy habits escape the web of negative thought. The author also highlights the importance of community and common goals in relationships focusing on the strength he found in his wife for this interview-based book. Two minds focused on the same goal helps to break through obstacles and strengthen the habits that lead to success. Another key point is that your mind attracts what it dwells on. Hypnotic rhythm is neither good nor bad. It's more like a magnet. For the non-drifter, it is the means by which he achieves his success. For the drifter, it is the means by which he loses his way. Ultimately, the devil deceives by making negative thinking and destructive deeds enticing. Harness the power of hypnotic rhythm by focusing on your goals and developing habits that will lead you towards them. Many human being who can be definite in his aims and plans can make life hand over whatever is wanted. Napoleon Hill here is where the author begins to lay out the seven principles of good, each of which carries with it the seed of danger. The first principle of good is definiteness of purpose. Definiteness of purpose is about being purpose-driven, intentional, and focused on accomplishing your goals. The seed of danger you can fall under, if you're careless, is a sudden greed for power and ego. Those who are definite in their plan and their purpose will not see failure. They may see temporary defeat, but not failure. The person who moves with definiteness recognizes the difference between temporary defeat and failure. When plans fail, he substitutes others, but he does not change his purpose. He perseveres. Some time is spent on discussing the church and schools as the devil's most helpful allies. The church continues the belief of hell and the devil 
promoting fear while the schools teach children to recite and memorize rather than become independent thinkers. The author emphasizes the power of prayer. In short, negative prayer that whines about problems, pain, and hardship tends to bring about negative results. On the other hand, positive prayer from someone who knows what they want tends to bring about positive results. The bottom line is, focus on what you want, not what you don't. As Hill writes in the book, your dominating thoughts attract through a definite law of nature, by the shortest and most convenient route, their physical counterpart. Be careful what your thoughts dwell upon. No man is free who is not master of himself. Epictetus. The author tells us that our dominating desires can be crystallized into their physical equivalents through a definiteness of purpose backed by a definiteness of plans with the aid of rhythm and time. Now it can take some effort to discover your definite purpose, perhaps a little more work to create a plan of action, but to get yourself into a regular rhythm of habits that inch you closer and closer to achieving your goals over time, well that requires a whole lot of upfront discipline. There are three appetites that every individual must master, hunger, sex, and the expression of loosely organized opinions. There are many more that should be controlled, but these are the ones to start with. To master the aforementioned appetites does not mean complete suppression. Instead, it means knowing how to feed them without overindulging. Sexual energy or sex transmutation is one of the more dangerous forces or appetites that can lead to poverty and ruin when mismanaged. Napoleon Hill also warns us that overindulging in sex can also crush your creativity. But when this energy is mastered, it can be transmuted into a driving force to help you accomplish your goals, catapult your creativity, and boost your energy levels. Someone who talks too much and expresses loosely organized opinions attracts unfavorable attention. It is the one who listens that learns, not the one who talks. Uninvited expressions of opinions destroy relationships and networking opportunities. Develop healthy habits around food and exercise. Learn to control your sex drive and harness that energy into creativity and goal seeking. Tame your tongue on social media. Listen before you speak, and when you do give your opinion, make sure it is well developed and sought after. Failure often serves as a blessing in disguise because it breaks the grip of hypnotic rhythm and frees the mind for a fresh start. Napoleon Hill Failure benefits people that are driven because they know it brings with it opportunity. Failure only becomes failure when it is accepted by you as permanent. Instead, begin to see it as a setback, or better yet, an obstacle to overcome. People are blessed with abundance or stuck in poverty because they have made the state of their existence permanent, through hypnotic rhythm. For example, a person stuck in poverty may stay in poverty if they spend most of their time thinking about and focusing on their financial problems and poverty-ridden circumstances. Why? Because what you focus on will only expand. Even if you don't want to be in financial distress, simply thinking about your problems around that issue will only expand them. On the flip side, however, thinking about solutions to your financial problems will expand your potential for climbing out and creating abundance in your life. Thoughts plus actions determine our outcomes. Positive thoughts lead to productive actions, which lead to powerful results. We can each change ourselves and the outcome of where we are in life by first changing our thoughts and then acting on them accordingly. Adversity is a tool in that it takes away vanity and egotism from people and forces them to look for a new way to tackle a problem. It requires introspective original thought, intelligence, and meditation. It breaks the old habits that led to this failure and wipes the slate clean to start new habits. 
from 80% solution focus and 20% problem focus. Spend most of your time thinking about solutions rather than dwelling on problems. When faced with a failure, change your thought patterns. Your past does not equal your future. Just because you failed last year, last month, last week or today, does not mean you can't get up and try again. This failure is not the end. It is merely an obstacle that needs a solution. Spend time evaluating how you got to this point and what steps you can take to overcome it. Then go out and do it. Nature will not tolerate idleness or vacuums of any sort. All space must be and is filled with something. When the individual does not use the brain for the expression of positive, creative thoughts, nature fills the vacuum by forcing the brain upon negative thoughts. Napoleon Hill Environment and time are key components of success. It is the people we surround ourselves with and the activities we spend our time on that influence who we become. If you put yourself in an environment that aligns with your definite purpose and goals, you can position yourself to succeed. Conversely, if you put yourself in an environment that does not, you position yourself to drift into perpetual failure. Non-drifters are cautious about their environmental influences, while drifters are victims of their environments. Over time, we harmonize with our environment. So make sure you are in an environment that adds to your value and goals, not one that drains you. Thought habits develop over time. Negative thoughts are punished, and positive thoughts are rewarded with success. Time is the process by which we acquire wisdom, but only for the non-drifter. Negative thought habits do not lead to wisdom. Learn to exercise caution when mapping out your plan to success. Oftentimes people jump in before they've fully thought out a plan. But don't mistake fear for caution. They are not the same. One paralyzes, while the other helps create a plan of action. Surround yourself with people headed in the same direction as you, or be pulled in the wrong direction. Are the people around you supporting you or holding you back? Pick a harmonious crowd. Use care and caution when developing relationships. Learn to say no to anything and anyone that could cause you to drift. We must give in to the part of us that does not recognize limitations and finds a way to accomplish what it is we desire. Temporary defeat may present itself but that is only temporary. Success is right around the corner, but only if we push through the failures. When failure occurs, because it will, it is important to remember that no matter how difficult the problem may seem, there is always a solution. The author believes that obstacles are in fact part of the plan of God, who he calls infinite intelligence. These obstacles are the means by which we learn leadership, serviceable skills and the value of giving to others. It is vital to make an inventory of the blessings we do have in life and to give thanks continually for them. You are in control of your destiny, but only if you take the actionable steps required. Control your thoughts and overcome your fears. Create habits that harness the power of hypnotic rhythm. Failure is not permanent. It is only an obstacle. Adjust accordingly. You are entitled to know that two entities occupy your body. One of these entities is motivated by and responds to the impulse of fear. The other is motivated by and responds to the impulse of faith. Will you be guided by faith or will you allow fear to overtake you? Napoleon Hill <laughs>